Please note that this video has spoilers for the subject. Combat movie thoughts. So early on we see the brother of Liu Kang fighting Shang Tsung. And it's no wonder he's losing to Shang Tsung because he's fighting in slow motion. I don't know what he's trying to do with that. I was pretty happy that this is one of the few cases where Paul W. S. Anderson does not abuse the crap out of slow-mo in action scenes. He seems to think that it automatically makes action scenes better and not just, you know, longer. I'm not saying slow-mo can't be good in action scenes, but you gotta know when to use it. And Paul Davis Anderson really doesn't. But in this, it's just, you know, you know, the first fight between, you know, unknown relative of Liu Kang. Why wasn't that Kung Lao? I mean, I, I'm not a fan of the games, but I'm told it should have been Kung Lao. It would have made more sense. It would have made an impact with the fans of the games. Anyway, that first fight, and then, you know, when Liu Kang faces off against Shang Tsung at the very end. How does that work, by the way? Shang Tsung is apparently fighter for Outworld and judge of these tournaments. I, I'm not sure, you know, conflict of interest much? Couldn't you have found a neutral party or something? Anyway, I'm also not entirely sure what all the fighters, I guess guards, are doing there. Are they just there in case someone wants to snoop on Kano and Goro? Or, you know, are they... I don't know. How, how long is the tournament supposed to go on anyway? Are every... Are all of those going to fight champions from other realms at some point? How does Johnny Cage get back from the realm that, you know, Scorpion pulls him into anyway? I, yeah, suddenly he's just back, you know, it's just, yeah. The fight between Sub-Zero and Liu Kang, every time Sub-Zero appears in this movie. It's a major anti-climax. The breaking of the gun is kind of cool. And then, you know, Raiden just hurls him and Scorpion away with colored lightning and, you know, claims, oh, they were about to attack. I don't think they were. I think they were just posing. You know, they just stepped into the shot and broke a gun that was aimed at one of them and that was kind of it. They weren't really all that threatening. I think it would have been good if they had started to launch an attack and then the lightning came. But anyway, so yeah, there's that. Then Sub-Zero goes up against, you know, a total of one guy, you know, who's really proud of his abs. And finally, it's Liu Kang and Sub-Zero, and it, all three times, complete anti-climax, you know. Sub-Zero is a fighter, but he never really fights. He just uses freezing ability all the time, and not really that effectively either, you know, except against that one guy who, you know, it's the same typical Paul W. Sanders thing. If you're gonna show someone who's a really good fighter, then let's see them fight instead of just showing off and then dying. I get it, you know, it's surprising to us, but it's not effective. It's not a good filmmaking, you know, it's not a good approach to that kind of scene. The... What... Why exactly did Johnny Cage follow into Outworld? He doesn't actually do anything once he shows up. He just fires off more, you know, dumb humor lines. And, you know, he doesn't fight anyone. What is he doing while Liu Kang is fighting Reptile anyway? He's just standing in the background waiting for that fight to end. I mean, I get the whole, you know, one-on-one -on -one thing, but that it wasn't a scheduled fight, you know, it's just suddenly Reptile attacks him. You know, I guess, I bet he wishes he had just left Reptile alone, you know, when it's invisible there on the wall. Shouldn't it have been at Chameleon if it can change color? Anyway, he then throws it into a statue and it comes alive and you know he defeats it awesome fight by the way just that was really good also great music in this movie just 
really spot on, you know, if you like the Mortal Kombat music. And, you know, he then kills the reptile, the, you know, CGI form of reptile afterwards, or at least we think he does. It's a point of view shot because they couldn't quite make the effect work, I guess. And worms come out of the statue's stomach. And the credits inform us that even they were treated humanely, even the smallest of Earth's creatures. That was kind of cute. Yeah. But yeah, really, you know. And then Shang Tsung, Shang Tsung challenges Johnny, and you know, that's kind of it. There's no. He doesn't actually do anything in the. in our world at all. Yeah. Also thought it was a little, you know, Raiden doesn't get to do anything other than zap lightning and cue that bunch of guys who, you know, they were just standing waiting for him to point out that, hey, there, there are more people for you to fight. And then they look and suddenly you can hear them and see them, you know, kind of strange that. Again, Paul Yubers Anderson, please study filmmaking before you continue it. I suppose that's about what there is to comment on. Well, one more thing. If Shang Tsung is judge and he knows that, you know, Kitana shouldn't spend too much time around Liu Kang, why is there a fight between them? Why wasn't it just Goro fighting Liu Kang? You know, it's just... And why does he keep allowing them to speak to each other? It's kind of... I also wasn't entirely clear on if her father is actually the Emperor as seen at the very end, or... She says something about the rightful leader... I don't know. Anyway. Yeah, I suppose that's it. So if there's anything I missed and you really want my thoughts on, you know, just down below. Please rate and comment, and hey, if you like this video, that subscribe button's just waiting for you to click it.